Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome here today. We're going to start today by showing you a short film. what gives uh, Malawian farmers hope. Well, trade is empowering as it unlocks a pot potential of a country. Everybody earns something. Most people are employed. For me, the commerce will surely allow me to improve my laboratory and participate in the development of my country. As part of the cashew industry in the Gambia, I'm very happy to create employment. Trade means development. Trade means reduction of poverty. It means empowering women. My feeling is that we are making progress. Je suis chimiste et entrepreneur. J'ai un laboratoire qui s'appelle Nectalab. This project is empowering over 3,000 women, and we've seen tangible results. The positive will When I think about the future, I feel very excited because more young people will have employment. This partnership with the EIF has had a very big impact in Malawi in terms of opening markets as well as enhancing our productive capacity. Donc en fait, pour moi, euh, l'idéal, mon projet vraiment, ce serait de créer vraiment une semi-industrie où je pourrais employer beaucoup de monde. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, good morning, bienvenue and welcome to this global forum on inclusive trade for the least developed countries. My name is Sarah Beeching and I'm going to be your MC for the next two days. Having worked in international development for decades, it's refreshing and critically important to have that the principles of inclusion are being applied to the debates at trade at this ver about trade at this very high level. I want to thank the Enhanced Integrated Framework for convening this meeting today. It may not have the catchiest name, but the work that it's doing is critical. Um, and it's helping with trade in the poorest countries in the world. In the last two decades, there has been a boom in world trade. And we've seen unprecedented interconnections growing between countries, companies, and people as barriers have come down. And yet we have a growing trade gap. A trade gap between developing nations and the poorest countries, and an increasing instability in the world economy. The world's poorest nations, home to 13% of the world's population, engage in less than 1% of the world's global trade. And what this meeting is focused on is ensuring that LDCs are further integrated into world trade and, and, the, and, and at scale. Over the next two days, we will look in detail at some of the factors that hamper a low-income country's ability to trade, including barriers to entry into international markets, the support that's needed for domestic private sector engagement, and how best to seek out regional and global opportunities. But before we dive into the substance, a little housekeeping. 
safety first. No fire drill is planned. If the fire alarm goes off, please leave the auditorium and the exits are to the rear and the sides. Interpretation is available in English and French. I hope you've all found your earpieces. None of us need to shout today, but the sound is all transmitted through your earpieces. Please put your mobile phones on silent, but please engage in social media. We're really hoping that this conversation will extend beyond the walls of this auditorium. We're using various hashtags, which you'll find on these cards, which are on the tables. Um, we also have the ability to download an application and the schedule onto our mobile phones for the next two days. All of the details you'll find here. And to the speakers, my role is to ensure that we have time for all of the remarks that everybody wants to make here. So I hope you'll forgive me if I remind you to keep your interventions brief. To set the tone for our discussions over the next two days, I'm delighted to, pre to present the, dire the, the Director General of the World Trade or Organization, Roberto Azevedo. Unfortunately, he can't be here in person with us, but he has recorded this video message to open our forum. Esteemed guests, ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the WTO and welcome to this global forum on inclusive trade for least developed countries. I'm sorry I cannot be with you in person today, but I have an unavoidable personal matter. Nevertheless, I wanted to send a message of support, and this event is exclusively dedicated to achieving inclusive trade in LDCs, and therefore, it couldn't be more important. Uh, this is reflected in the attendance that we have confirmed for this event. We have more than 300 participants from around the world, and this includes leaders from government, international organizations, the private sector, and academia. And most importantly, we have more than 40 LDCs taking part. So I'm very confident that this is going to be a productive two days. Our aim here is to ensure that more and more people benefit from international trade, especially in LDCs. So how do we achieve that? I think three elements stand out for me. First, we must ensure that we have a strong and robust trading system that helps LDCs to access global markets. The shared rules that we have in the WTO are essential here to help create a level playing field. Yet, today we see trade tensions rising and potential threats emerging to the trading system itself. And in this scenario, smaller economies tend to lose the most. So we must work to resolve these tensions and we have to, to do it as quickly as we can, as we have done many times before. We must work to strengthen the system so that it is responsive to all our, our members. Um, and, and, and we must build on the various decisions on LDC issues that WTO members have already taken uh, in recent years. And that's the first element, I think, in making global trade more inclusive. The second element is to ensure that LDCs have the capacity to use the trading system. The WTO does a wide range of work in this area. Uh, we have a variety of initiatives, all of them pushing in the same direction and pursuing complementary goals. Of course, we have the, uh, the overall Aid for Trade initiative, and significantly, we have the Enhanced Integrated Framework, which is the driving force behind this forum. The EIF is the only multilateral partnership dedicated exclusively to assisting LDCs to trade. It plays a vital role to help these countries use trade as an engine for growth, poverty reduction, and sustainable development. And it has made real impact on the ground. And let me highlight a few examples. In 2017 alone, the EIF supported 282 micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in LDCs around the world. It helped these companies to create new jobs, producing a range of goods, and that goes from spices and mangoes to honey and textiles. In Malawi, the EIF has stimulated more than $47 million in new agricultural exports. And in Samoa, the EIF has helped over 650 farmers to achieve certification as organic. And this will boost incomes by over $200,000 annually. 
In this way, the EIF is a great example of aid for trade in action. So we must continue strengthening these efforts, and this is what this forum is all about. Uh, and this brings me to the third necessary element in creating a more inclusive trading system, and that is to advocate for the LDCs. I hope that a strong message will go out from this event in support of LDCs and our shared commitment to use trade to promote inclusiveness and development. And we need everyone behind this goal, partners, donors, the LDCs themselves, everyone. So I wish you a rich, fruitful and very productive event. Let's continue to work together to deliver for the LDCs a trading system and a global economy that is truly inclusive. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that inspirational opening uh, statement. And I'm now delighted to welcome our keynote speaker to the stage, Her Excellency, the Vice President of the Gambia, Mrs. Fatumata Yellow Tambajang. The Vice President has had a distinguished career, a deeply committed person to women's equality, as well as trade and development in her nation. And I am delighted to invite her to stage. Madam Vice President, you are most welcome. you need it. If you, if you can stand, no. you just stand here, yeah. I'm just going to get you some water now before you start. I'll just leave that for you Thank you. Okay. Madam Moderator, I'm always excited when I see a woman leader in action um, by way of um, promoting and championing the cause of women who are working fundamentally in different areas, yet even at the different level, at the international level, they are still unseen and invisible. Director General in absentia who has set the stage with a very inspiring statement. Executive Director, EIF, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Secretary General of UNCTAD, Honorable Ministers here present, government representatives, members of the International Diplomatic Corps and Diplomatic and Consular Corps, representatives of international organizations, regional economic commissions and NGOs, members of the media fraternity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my sincere appreciation and delight to the Director General of the World Trade Center Organization and the EIF for once again inviting the Gambia and my humble self to such an important meeting relating to inclusive trade and sustainable development. I want to thank the EIF for organizing this first global forum on inclusive trade for LDCs. Inclusive trade with a view to combat poverty and equality as the focus of this two-day dialogue. It is very appropriate for our countries as it gives the opportunity to share our experiences in the development of national, regional, and global programs for inclusive trade to development efforts. It also creates an opportunity for our countries to identify actions to liberate trade potentials. And I am pleased to, to play and call us all to action. Action is needed to use trade to fight poverty around the world. Action is needed to support the global trading system Action is needed to foster development and inclusive trade. Trade action for LDCs is needed now, and global uncertainties, a growing trade gap, 
and changes in what is traded and how. I look forward to working with our trading partners and donor community, including the private sector, to address the numerous barriers, including trade infrastructural needs, deterring our countries, and in particular, in the case of developing and LDC countries to trade for their economic growth. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, trade has been a strategic tool for reducing poverty and has delivered a number of incredible grains for the world economy. However, developing countries are yet to fulfill op and optimize the huge potential benefits from globalization. Thus, we need to strengthen our global partnerships and linkages to help address the trade capacities and development agenda. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is where the EF, EIF continues to play a key role as it brings donors, development agencies, private sector, civil society, and LDCs together to address the trade capacity challenges of the LDCs. For trade to be more inclusive and supportive to poverty reduction, we must bear in mind that priority should be given to integrating youths and women who are more disadvantaged in trade development programs. We need to do more to invest in skills, ICT, development of and empowering of women and youths. More importantly, we also in need to invest in MSMEs in order to access appropriate technology and affordable financing for enhanced inclusiveness in trade. The time is now in order to alleviate these challenges and to support inclusivity. Indeed, this global event is of particular importance to LDCs as it provides the platform to learn best practices, share experiences, foster collaboration with partner organizations, and promote innovative solutions for sustainable trade and economic growth. The event today is for action. Initiatives such as the EIF play a significant role in supporting LDCs, such as the Gambia, my country, to tackle supply side constraints and mainstream trade into national and regional development plans. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in, addi in addition to enhancing the inclusiveness of developing countries, and particularly LDCs in global trade, through available programs such as trade capacity building, improving competitiveness, and strengthening public-private partnerships, there is a pressing need to make trade more inclusive by creating avenues for MSMEs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a way forward for developing countries and LDCs to stimulate their economies and promote trade inclusiveness and sustainable development, the trade supports should target MSMEs because that is where you find women and youths. The Gambian economy, for example, is characterized by micro enterprises which operate in several sectors and women and youth play a key role in it. In terms of statistics, about 63% of MSMEs are micro enterprises and about 90% enterprises are in the formal sector, in which 80% comprising of women and youths involved in distribution of trade, gardening, and under handicrafts and artisanal trade. In spite of these challenges, we are seeing a significant increase in the participation of women in trade, but we cannot turn a blind eye on the urgency to address the needs to help expand their businesses. Despite the prevalence of, the gro of growth and potential of women entrepreneurs, they face significant constraints to enhance their competitiveness in their businesses and participation in international trade. To ensure trade inclusiveness, particularly the inclusion of women and youths, all hands must be on deck to address the lack of adequate sex disaggregated data low skills and market access opportunities. In this regard, I thank the ITC 
for its work in connecting women to global trade and also for launching the she trades in the Gambia. The moderator, ladies and gentlemen, following the historic democratic change in government, in my government in Gambia, we have been working tirelessly to re-engage with the international community. And in the process, we have been able to increase transparency and pre predict predictability in our trade and investment environment. This is also part of the democratic di di dividends which we have taken through necessary reforms in the relevant sectors and policies. The trade policy review in the Gambia was held in January 2018 and the government was commended to further reform the business environment to reduce cost of closing business, doing business, to improve competitiveness and promote private sector engagement. Therefore, we will continue to engage with the world to more insights on how to accord our country new opportunities and further help strengthen the existing strategies to increase our trade and development. We would like to express our appreciation for the work of the IEF, EIF, and we call on the donor community, private sector, civil society, and the media fraternity to continue giving their support to EIF, as the time is now for investment in LDCs, to lift people out of poverty, to create sustainable growth, to secure good jobs for women and youths. It is worth to note that the Gambia's partnership with the EIF, which dates back to 2010, is successful. The EIF program in the Gambia has been instrumental in advancing our development agenda, especially on trading, mainstreaming, strengthening institutional capacity and policy framework of key institutions and actors, quality enhancement in Kashu and Sesame, as you saw on the on the, on the highlights, and more importantly, the building of an ultra-modern cargo complex you have seen in the video. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, it should be our hope that inclusive trade will help the developing countries and LDCs in particular to revise the cycle of unemployment among women and youths by providing opportunities to our young people, our women, to ensure that necessary trade infrastructure are in place in these countries and, are equip, and to equip also women to grab trade opportunities for inclusive growth and development of our economies and our people. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, let me assure you of the full commitment and willingness of the government of the Gambia to uphold the rule of law and democratic values. We understand the Gambia believes in the multilateral trading system and its support is constant as it remains the only platform that avails us all the opportunity not only to discuss and agree on multilateral trade rules that promote fair trade but also enables us to mobilize support for our trade development process. I will dedicate these years of my administration under the leadership of His Excellency Adam Abaro to safeguard our mission, our nation's commitment to inclusive trade to stimulate economic growth and development. And uh, from the factual point of view that no country is an island, we want to do it with you here present in this hall and beyond the hall. Finally, please join me to call for more action for support to the trade development, particularly for developing countries and LDCs, with a view to combat poverty and equality for development of our world. Please join me in this important action to call, a call to support more inclusive trade and to take concrete actions so that more can reap the benefits of trade. I look forward in participating in other sessions of the global event on inclusive trade, and I wish you all a fruitful discussion and outcome, particularly in implementing the major decisions and recommendations that will be out of this meeting. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. You. You're going to be joining us today. Thank so, you. Uh, yes.
I'm delighted that Her Excellency will be joining us today. If you'd just like to take your seat here. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for those opening reflections that just really explain in words that I certainly could, could never achieve, just the importance of us all being here today. Now, I'm delighted to welcome to the stage some other incredibly important advocates for international trade for our panel discussion. Son Excellence Kom Hassan, Minister de Commerce et de l'Industrie de la République Centrafricaine. Merci, Monsieur. The Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Mukhehisira Kitui. And Ambassador Julian Braithwaite from the United Kingdom, permanent representative to the WTO. Thank you. Very welcome. Okay, thank you. Monsieur le Ministre, Votre Excellence, enchanté. Um, la République centrafricaine est le leader de PMA, uh, groupe coordinateur auprès de l'OMC. Qu'est-ce qui rend en 2018 le système commercial multilatéral et mondial uh, pertinent et important pour le PMA Vous avez le parole. Je pense qu'il faut que vous tous ayez. Euh Voilà. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Hein. Merci. Euh, vous, vous pouvez s'asseoir là-bas ou euh, on prend la prendre ouais. Peut-être c'est mieux pour ici. Hein. Non C'est comme vous voulez. D'accord. Merci. Merci. Madame la Présidente, Excellence, Madame la Vice-Présidente de la Gambie, Monsieur le Directeur Général de l'Organisation Mondiale du Commerce, OMC, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général de la Conférence des Nations Unies pour le Commerce et le Développement, Monsieur le Directeur Exécutif du Secrétariat Exécutif du Cadre Intégré Renforcé, Distingué Délégué, Mesdames et Messieurs. Ce forum mondial sur le commerce inclusif qui se déroule aujourd'hui au sein de l'Organisation mondiale du commerce réveille une importance capitale pour le groupe des pays les moins avancés de l'OMC, dont la République centrafricaine, notre pays, a l'honneur de coordonner les activités cette année 2018. Je voudrais à cet égard vous témoigner toute la gratitude du gouvernement centrafricain pour l'honneur que vous nous donnez de partager la modeste expérience de la République centrafricaine quant au rôle du commerce dans la croissance et le développement. Comme vous le savez sans doute, la République centrafricaine est un pays moins avancé, situé au cœur de l'Afrique et donc sans littoral. Elle regorge d'importantes ressources naturelles, notamment dans les domaines des mines, de l'agriculture, des eaux et forêts, etc. Mais ces ressources sont sous-exploitées. Conscient que ces énormes potentialités ne peuvent être valorisées que par le commerce, la RCA a engagé depuis plusieurs années les réformes en vue de promouvoir les investissements et de favoriser le développement d'un secteur privé dynamique, compétitif, créateur d'emplois et contribuant à la réduction de la pauvreté. Au niveau politique, cela s'est traduit par l'intégration du commerce dans les documents de stratégie de réduction de pauvreté des années antérieures et plus actuellement dans le plan national de relèvement et de consolidation de la paix qui couvre la période de 2016 à 2021. Dans ce contexte, 
la République centrafricaine s'est engagée à assurer des conditions propices au développement du secteur privé et à l'emploi par l'amélioration de l'appui aux entreprises, à la formation professionnelle et à l'entrepreneuriat. Au plan de l'organisation institutionnelle, plusieurs structures d'appui au secteur privé ont été mises en place. Il y a la création du guichet unique, où toutes les formalités de création d'entreprise y sont accomplies dans un délai réduit et à moindre coût. L'adoption de la charte des investissements, qui accorde des avantages et incitations fiscales aux douaniers aux activités de transformation des biens et des services sans discrimination de nationalité. La création du cadre de concertation entre l'État et le secteur privé placé sous la tutelle du Premier ministre, chef du gouvernement. Ce cadre est chargé de proposer des réformes en matière de l'amélioration du climat des affaires. La redynamisation du centre d'assistance aux petites et moyennes entreprises et de l'artisanat. Dans le cadre du dialogue avec les partenaires au développement du commerce, la stratégie d'intervention s'articule autour des concertations périodiques, des tables rondes, des, tables rondes, des forums, en vue de la mobilisation des partenaires et investisseurs en relief avec nos potentialités et priorités commerciales. Dans cette optique, la RCA a organisé successivement et avec succès deux grands forums. Le forum sur la promotion du secteur privé en 2015 et le forum des investisseurs en 2017. Ces assises ont été l'occasion d'identifier les principaux obstacles au développement du commerce, de proposer des mesures idoines, irrélatives et de mettre en exergue les grandes opportunités d'affaires qui existent dans le pays. Je voudrais témoigner ici qu'avant la crise dans notre pays, la mise en œuvre de la première phase du projet cadre intégré renforcé a permis de réaliser plusieurs activités de renforcement des capacités commerciales. Cela a également contribué à renforcer la prise de conscience de l'importance du commerce dans la croissance économique et le développement et à susciter de grands intérêts auprès des acteurs bénéficiaires. C'est fort des résultats encourageants de l'époque que le ministère en charge du commerce était appelé sous le sobriquet de, je cite, « ministère du cadre intégré ». Fin de citation. À cet égard, permettez-moi de témoigner une fois de plus la reconnaissance du gouvernement centrafricain à l'endroit du secrétariat exécutif du cadre intégré renforcé, du gestionnaire du fonds d'affectation spéciale et de toutes les agences principales du CIR pour leur soutien ayant conduit à la décision de la reprise du projet en République centrafricaine. La mise en œuvre des activités pour la deuxième phase contribuera à la réalisation progressive des priorités commerciales contenues dans le plan de relèvement et de consolidation de la paix. D'ores et déjà, en dépit des difficultés qu'a connues notre pays, les récents efforts en matière de réforme économique engagés par la République centrafricaine lui ont permis d'obtenir un taux de croissance moyen de son produit intérieur brut ces trois dernières années d'environ 4,5%. Et ce taux est tiré en grande partie par le secteur du commerce. La République centrafricaine, par ma voix, croit que le bon positionnement des pays les moins avancés dans l'avenir par rapport aux disparités dans les échanges commerciaux dépend en premier lieu des PMA eux-mêmes et ensuite de la solidarité du reste de la communauté internationale. Il s'agit de faire du commerce le principal moteur de la croissance et du développement par la mise en place des, des infrastructures appropriées, la levée des obstacles à la production, à la transformation et à la circulation des biens, la pro, promotion de la culture d'affaires auprès des femmes et des jeunes. Pour cela, 
la RCA, la République centrafricaine, au nom du groupe des PMA, souhaite remercier grandement le secrétariat du cadre intégré renforcé ainsi que l'ensemble des pays donateurs qui, de par la combinaison de leurs contributions et actions, ont permis de développer et de faire aboutir de nombreux projets de renforcement des capacités d'offres de manière à contribuer à une meilleure intégration de nos pays dans le commerce mondial. Le groupe des PMA, de l'OMC, réitère son plein appui au système commercial multilatéral et reconnaît que le commerce est un moteur pour une croissance économique inclusive et durable. En définitive, rappelons-nous de l'engagement commun pris à Nairobi en 2016 lors de la 14e session ministérielle de la Conférence des Nations Unies sur le commerce et le développement, je cite, de passer des décisions aux actions afin de créer un environnement économique incitatif et équitable pour le commerce et le développement. Fin de citation. Je vous remercie de votre bienveillante attention. especially the LDCs, into the global economy. How important is it? Oh, it's, can you hear me now? Great. Sorry, they've given me another microphone. So should we start that again? <laughs> um, you had an organization that's dedicated to supporting uh, the integration of developing countries, um, especially LDCs, into the global economy. Um, can you tell us how important trade is um, as part of a development solution? Um, what more can international organizations do, do to support inclusive trade? And what successes are you seeing? The floor. Thank you very much. Um, is that working now? Yes, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, may I express my appreciation to my friends, the leadership of uh, EIF and uh, other participants. Now, we at UNCTAD, first of all, say, to find a way of prescribing a solution, you must diagnose the problem. So one of the most important things we deal with is trying to scan the horizon. What are the challenges real felt today and emerging? And then how can we customize our work to be relevant in dealing with those challenges? It has been demonstrated beyond any doubt that properly used, trade can be a great enabler for development and can be an integrator in the spreading the benefits of international engagement. But what is the state of play? We have seen over the recent past, just over the past eight years alone, LDC's share of global trade declined from 1% to 0.8%. And at the same time, while we know the critical importance of foreign direct investment, inspiring production in order to enhance what you can trade into the global economy, we last week was uh, launching our World Investment Report in Santo Domingo. And in 2017 alone, FDI flows to LDCs declined by 17% to a mere $25 billion. Now, it's even smaller if you consider that quite a bit of that, like $3.8 billion, is to one country alone, Ethiopia. Uh, meaning there's a very substantial challenge on financing productive capacity in order to gainfully engage in international trade. So what are we doing in this situation? At one level is support efforts to mobilize do domestic resources. Our customized program on uh, automatic, uh, automated systems, um, customs management, ASICUDA, has been an important success story in assisting countries to get what is their due share out of trade. Uh, the story of Afghanistan is the best example, perhaps, that in seven years, with the installation of Asikuda, we helped customs in Afghanistan to raise revenue from $50 million to $1 billion per year. 
uh, Monday next week, I'll be in Kinshasa handing over the completed trained personnel of uh, DRC Congo to take over the Asikuda, a program which, when we launched it, in three months, customs revenue collection was equivalent to the previous two years. So this is some of the packages. We engage governments in building capacity for trade, we support improved management of ports through train for ports uh, for trade uh, program across the uh, developing world and particularly LDCs. But importantly also and increasingly so, helping to unlock the power of women traders is a key component of enhancing domestic resources and trade benefit in the LDCs. Last month we launched uh, our first region gender study of regional trade integration in the East African community, for example. And what do we find out? Most border traders are women. Most regional integration efforts in LDCs are structured by men for urban men. So that if you are moving 20-foot containers across borders, it's called region of free trade. If a woman is moving 10 kilograms of grain, she's called a smuggler. Um, so t identifying the vulnerabilities and in, uh, the ambiguities in practice and rules is an important area of unlocking the potential of women traders who are going to be major players in this. Similarly, we have just done the study on migration, orderly migration in Africa, which shows phenomenally that structured orderly migration is an economic gain to the source and destination country. Most African migrants are in Africa. The world thinks of migrants as people dying off Lampedusa. The reality is that for centuries, our people have been able to gainfully exchange skills, competences, and integrate trade through migration. So giving such platform for identifying issues on which to build partnerships is important. But there are a number of key issues that I also, just in a summary, I want to mention. When we have been supporting trade facilitation, we find there is something missing. Making trade easy without building ability to trade is just facilitating import trade. So increasingly we must develop trade facilitation pari passu with investment facilitation. Build productive capacity to use trade to lift people out of poverty. And then lastly, over the past decade, electronic commerce has been growing at about 6% above global GDP which is much, much better than the traditional trade. Uh, increasingly, electronic market visibility is critical, particularly for small businesses, to access in our domestic markets. And what are we doing? We have a major program which we are rolling out in LDC countries, E-Trade for All. Uh, diagnostic studies on the state of play on electronic infrastructure, uh, regulatory environment, uh, local content development capacity, coherence between skill development and the needs of electronic markets uh, as a way of helping countries fashion their laws and practices to get on board this fast-moving train of global commerce. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary General. Let me now turn to, to Ambassador Julian Braithwaite. The, the United Kingdom has been a strong supporter of the international rules-based trading system and the largest donor partner of the EIF uh, Secretariat. How do you think the donor community and richer countries can best support LDCs? Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks very much. And I'm thrilled to be here on this panel with uh, such distinguished leaders of the key, our key EIF partner governments and also with the Secretary General um, at what is the very first EIF Global Forum, the first of many. Um, and I'm here, as you say, Sarah, today because uh, the UK is committed to supporting the least developed countries in the global trading system and in particular uh, addressing the point that the Secretary General made, which is that it's no good just you know, having trade deals that open up markets in theory if you aren't actually providing the capacity or helping build the capacity that allows traders, small traders across uh, the least developed countries to benefit from that. And that is where the EIF comes in. And it's sometimes easy, and uh, we often do this, to, especially with the poorest countries, to focus only on the challenges that they face in reaching overseas markets, and we talk about the small size of the markets, we talk about the high trade costs, the difficulty of diversifying beyond basic commodities, 
and the complexity of trade negotiations and being able to meaningfully participate in them. Uh, but we also must not forget the opportunities, particularly in this town and particularly in this building of the World Trade Organization. Uh, with the SDGs, we have a global consensus on aid that recognizes that countries cannot aid, end aid dependency without economic growth, job creation that comes through trade. Um, and the UK is very much a strong believer in the power of aid for trade to unlock growth, reduce poverty, create the trading partners of the future, including uh, for all of our countries in the UK amongst them. And we need to ensure that the poorest countries have the tools, though, to trade their way out of poverty, which is where, as I say, the EIF comes in. And the EIF uh, is part of that cool toolkit and has a long track record of tackling the barriers that LDCs do face in global trade in the way that we heard at the very beginning. We think it gives LDC governments the analysis and the evidence that they need to understand the barriers. It creates a platform for different parts of government to speak to each other and to speak to the wider ecosystem of trade stakeholders in their countries and indeed uh, abroad. And it helps LDC governments and exporters understand where their trade priorities lie. Um, that's why we, um, last December in, in Buenos Aires at the WHO Ministerial, we committed another £16 million to the EIF on top of the £14 million that we'd put in earlier into the programme, which is a confirmation uh, of the UK's commitment to the programme and also to our belief that it does deliver the results that it was set up to achieve. Um, this has to be part of, and this is something the UK very much believes in, it has to be part of also of countries like the United Kingdom um, recognizing that access to our markets is a critical part of aid for trade, that it cannot just be about uh, trade facilitation, it cannot just be about um, warm words in multilateral fora, it also has to be about uh, markets and access to markets. And that's why a year ago we, um, we confirmed that as we leave the European Union, we will maintain the LDC's existing duty-free access to UK markets, and we'll be looking uh, beyond that to seeing how we as the United Kingdom can take that forward and actually put into practice uh, what we believe in terms of aid for trade, leading to development and growth. So we're going to be looking in those uh, months and years ahead after that at our trade policy and our aid programming work and seeing how that they too can together support uh, breaking down the barriers to LDC exports, supporting the infrastructure that LDCs need to trade, and build the skills and the knowledge of overseas markets that LDCs and their traders need in order to uh, benefit from the opportunities. So, Sarah, you asked about what are the, uh, the things that need to change so that LDCs can increase their competitiveness and be more present in international markets. And I would just, I think, highlight three things in uh, particular. First, uh, we think it's very important to have a relentless focus on value for money in all of these programs, that they actually deliver the results that they're meant to deliver and that we focus really all of our attention on making sure that we turn those words into actual outcomes on the ground, um, which have more uh, powerful impacts. And we think, as I say, the EAF does that, and that's why we've, we've put in more money. Secondly, uh, we need to keep on refining our trade and aid toolkit to ensure that LDCs benefit the most from, from this package. Uh, we need to understand better how LDC exporters use the preferences we provide uh, and develop aid instruments that respond to fast-changing markets and negotiations. Uh, whether it's helping LDCs meet their obligations under the Trade Facilitation Agreement, for example, which was agreed uh, in, in Bali, or harness the benefits of e-commerce, for example, through the uh, e-trade for all initiative that the Secretary General was talking about, or understanding the value of international standards or indeed of pro-competitive and predictable domestic regulation, we need to be more responsive, more flexible and more effective. And thirdly, speaking directly to the theme of today's Global Forum, we need to put fairness and in, in inclusivity at the heart of growth. And we've just hosted in London a, a very successful Commonwealth Summit, uh, and I'm delighted to see the Secretary General of the Commonwealth here today, um, where Commonwealth leaders spoke to the importance of an inclusive trading system, uh, one that supports the smallest and most vulnerable economies to participate in global trade and benefit, uh, we hope, much more in the future. And so in closing, I would just like to, again, underline our continued support for the EIF uh, and its important work in helping us unlock the enormous power of trade support development, and lift millions out of poverty around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Let me turn back now to you, Your Excellency, Vice President. Um, in your speech, you talked about the importance of 
coming together and working with the international partners, with, with the private sector, civil society organisations. I wonder, are there some key ingredients to make that relationship work? Um, what do you think would, would make for a better inclusivity between those partners? Thank you, Sarah. Um, from our perspective, um, when we started, uh, we had uh, some sort of like a soul searching in terms of uh, the opportunities that can really bring together the synergies, the energies of these different sectors. And uh, finally, that culminated into a business advisory council, which was established uh, two months ago. And in it, the, the members comprise uh, private sector, government, civil society, and the media. The reason why we are always going with the media is the fact that they are the people who really send our voices, our messages, and our programs out of the four walls of uh, government and civil society. And uh, we believe that they have energies in the civil society. You have uh, predominantly women who are in the informal sectors, who are the shakers and movers of trade, as uh, the UN Secretary of uh, UNCTAD, Secretary General, has highlighted, and also the UK delegate. Um, we bring in mainstream the civil society so that we can look at the nitty gritties, the challenges that uh, women and youth have in the civil society sector. And uh, we look at, we contextualize uh, their perspective and uh, build on the local content so that uh, it can be, trade can be more inclusive. Um, at the level of um, government and partners, we have what you call the AGOA which is a trade facilitation for, for Gambian women and particularly the M SMEs to, to grow out of the, the local talent for, for export. Um, this has enhanced trade and uh, politically also I think which is very important is the, to have the political environment, the enabling environment, which is a democratic uh, dispensation that allows uh, trade incentives for partners um, by within the framework of public and private partnership. Uh, this is a new uh, innovation, it's, a, it's an innovative um, partnership that we have created to ensure that we, there is a balance in trade, both, both domestic and internationally. But fundamentally, I want to speak on the issue of domestic resources, which is uh, which the UN Secretary on that has mentioned. Uh, it's good to look out outwardly, but also it's important that by way of commitment that governments show that they are interested in, in making trade as a hub and investment for their countries by way of um, mobilizing domestic resources and including domestic uh, resources and the, the budget allocations into trade, like the strengthening of the institutional capacity of the Ministry of Trade, Employment, uh, Youth and Employment and Industry by also supporting the private sector, giving them uh, incentives, and also the ASICUDA program had generated a lot of growth, I think about 15% growth in our local uh, economy uh, through the ASICUDA, the support of UNCTAD. Uh, the GRA, which is the, the authority for revenue, and other ports authority has really increased their productivity. And finally, I think the building of um, national capacities of women and youths. That's fundamental. Women have been in trade and investment. They are called, termed as smugglers. When other barons do other trade, they look at them as exporters, uh, which is fundamentally, we need to shift the paradigm uh, by recognizing the, the indigenous and also the talent and ingenuity of women and youths, to mainstream them in the local economy and help them through value addition of the trade and investment to really outreach the, the platform of international trade. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for all of your reflections. And, and thanks to our distinguished panel of speakers for really setting the tone and the challenge for these days ahead of us. Um, as Director General Azevedo said, we have a shared commitment to use trade to promote inclusiveness and development. 
and we need everyone behind this goal. I'd like to say a special thank you again to the EIF and to their partner countries in particular for being here today. Um, and thank you to the agencies and the trust fund donors and the additional forum sponsors, um, the International Islamic Trade Finance Corporation, the Deve German Development Corporation, and the Trade Facilitation Agreement Facility. Thank you all. We will now have a short break um, before our next session, which will explore how we can forge new paths for LDCs in multilateral and regional trade. Please help yourselves to coffee outside um, and take a moment to look at the fantastic photo exhibition. And we'll be starting again at 10.45. Thank you all. <laughs>